What's up guys, this is Shana and today we are going to check out Seoul Estate in Kuching. Let's go! We are back in Kuching. The last time I was here, it was like 3 years ago. And our friendly party, which is one of the team of the makeover guys, is also runs as a developer. Therefore, pull some strings and today we are here to kind of review their latest launch. Now they are still trying to fix some work because the official launch is going to be two days away. So we are getting first dips. And that's always cool. And the sales gallery is actually in Brighton Square, where Sunway College is. And when you look into the drone shot, this intersection seems to be the main commercial area where the roads are just wide, traffic are just heavy. I've been speaking to the design team, the development team, the legal team, the marketing team in trying to understand the local dynamics around the property market here. We at West Malaysia should be really, really grateful for what we have because the property prices here are not cheap but yet the rate of overhang properties here is so low means that the supply couldn't really cope with the local demands itself which is very surprising to me but of course today we will kind of bring you guys through the property also some different formats of things because peninsula and east malaysia do not share the same land code that kind of forms different practices among the development and yeah let's talk when we check out the sales gallery So we are now in the sales gallery and you can see that the works are still ongoing. That's the best. This is a landed development and it's a gated and guarded. But the format of gated and guarded here is very very different in terms of strata title. It's not really being implemented here in Kuching. So this is kind of like those individual title landed house developments where they need to form their very own committee. And when you purchase the property, there will be some legal documents attached with the purchase to ensure that this acts like a strata title project. Kind of complicated but the philosophy behind is the same but this project really stands out when you look into the model in comparison to what's in the surrounding so this will be the entire project site of Seoul Estate in total there will be 269 units and phase 1 now is launching 74 units that kind of consists of semi D's and terrace houses so let's just run through the accessibility a little bit now when you see in first glance there are actually three main access one two Three. But after all these are constructed, they will actively only use one entrance in, one entrance out. That's the best for security, to control traffic, to control everything else. These will then be used as secondary or emergency exits for your utility trucks. So every project, there will be a requirement of 10% of land to be landscaped. They put majority of those within this main spinal road. So everybody gets a fair share of enjoyment of the common areas and here you will have all the facilities where you have the piazza, you have the water feature, you have the lawn area, you have the plaza, you have the basketball area and etc. They are just in abundance which is in contradiction to whatever individual title projects out there. However, my concern was since you are doing this master plan, right, why not just round this off? You see like this one facing the junction not as nice why do you have units facing the crossroad not as nice when i turn around here this unit will suffer not as nice and this is when the legal portion of the entire development process kicks in so when they acquire this piece of land the entire land form and structure comes along with it so it's very very difficult to redo the existing plan right now so you still have these kind of weird corners here and there which don't really make sense in first glance but after you have context of the development process which differs a lot from what we have in West Malaysia then you'll start to appreciate more because with the existing planning of an individual title they try to do different things In terms of location, this is located at Arang Road West Bay. Technically, it's just Jalan Batu Kawa, then Jalan Ketitir, then Jalan Arang seems to be one of the main roads here. And you can see a lot of accessibility 
and that's important for uh, housing development. And this is only 5 to 10 minutes away from Kuching City itself, also 11 km away from the Kuching International Airport. That's very important here. Lah. And then coming into the development, you go through this entrance statement. You will have security guards, you have water fountain here giving you that announcement of welcome home. Then when you drive through this, this is the entire green area that is around 3 acres. So in first glance, all residents get to enjoy all this before branching over to their respective homes. These concepts are still pretty foreign for the buyers here. So first of all, there are several G&G &G developments around this area already. And there's a significant price difference between the G&Gs and the non-G&Gs. G&G here means get and guarded lah. And that signifies the demand for security. Next to that will be the lifestyle elements where you come in, you have all these greenery, water fountains, common areas. All those requires maintenance fees and again, this differs to the conventional type of housings. Then when you're about to spend this amount of money on aspirational projects of such, right? There are codes that you need to obey, which is pretty similar to our strata law. There will be things that you cannot do. There will be restrictions here and there, but that's for the greater good of the entire development. In other words, this is not really for everyone. Nah. So type A is around 4,000 square feet and it's around 1.8 million. Then type B is 3,600 square feet Feet, and that's around 1.7 billion. And then for the terrace houses, you have like type C here, 2,200 square feet, 23 by 85, it's around 928,000. And these are the prices for properties that are in lease hold. So here is a 99 years lease, so after conversion, after construction, you will get the house maybe when it's 90 plus years lah, still. And the renewal process is pretty similar with what we have. You need to apply to the government whenever the lease is expiring. Then I I asked around projects around coaching, it's very common to have projects around 60 years lease. There are some freeholds, but it's very, very rare. 99 seems to be the more common ones. So again, as a West Malaysian, we have things in perpetuity, right? So what we have here is Type C, 2,245 square feet, 23 by 85. And they call it the courtyard home because once you park in the car, things are a little bit different. You enter the house from the left and it's not your conventional house where you get a living in the front. Instead, you get a living at the back, which is closer to your yard space. That's very, very nice because they have a garden design and this is just more practical instead of facing the cars. But then in Asian houses, we still need to have a ground floor bedroom in case we stay with our elderly. Going upstairs then, this will be a study area or a family hall. It depends how you want to use it. Two bedrooms here with a shared bathroom. Then you have the principal bedroom in the front with its en suite. Then in a conventional terrace house that we are more familiar with, back lanes are usually the negative space where the drains are, where people cook, then all the smokes, all the exhaust from the air cons all go to the back lane. Just by thinking about having the main space located behind the house, very unconventional. But if you look into the architecture, they located back to back greens against this back lane. That adds up the distance between buildings, number one, number two. It adds the visual impact of greens. You also expect families just hang out and chill. Then when you have neighbors, friends all walking and chilling around all together, it will be a community building aspect. Then the facade treatments, you have all the louvers to kind of control the direct sunlight into the space itself because it's not a direct north-south facing. So when it's kind of in the aspect where you need to preserve the facade, facade designs like this matter, right? So when you drive into a township, all units are different but similar in architectural language and across time this will kind of preserve the value instead of one house pink one house purple one house blue but again there's always the argument is i pay almost a million for my terrace house why can't i just dictate my own design so it really depends on which type of housing developments that you prefer right unfortunately now they don't have a show you need but via the brochure, via the model. Yeah, there's a lot of emphasis on the indoor-outdoor relationship. So you can see the amount of green space behind, the level of openings within the house. That concept is even demonstrated within the sales gallery itself in trying to bring more external elements into the space itself that will have more openings to kind of blur that boundary between what's outdoor and what's indoor. And that can only be done when you get the orientation right 
you get the space between buildings right you get your landscape strategy right you get the regulations right so everybody knows what can be done everybody knows what's the objective of the homes here then these can be created within the residential development and it's so cool because this kind of concept is rather new within the area of coaching but we have seen this many many times demonstrated within West Malaysia so to kind of be in this position to witness both sides right so cool but anyway let's go to the site Hey guys, so now we are at the project site itself and you can see the roads are all on level. Obvious thing will be the drains are also up, the infrastructures are also up. I found out that this entire piece of development belongs to a master developer, right? But in order to build all together, it will take time, it will take a lot of resources. So what they do is they just segregate this plot out to this developer, segregate that to developer. So all these developers are actually building at the same time. So that is kind of good also when you have competition among each other, try to out-innovate each other. So consumers will get the best out of it. Also, it will speed up the entire progress. Imagine if you were to build one plot by one plot by one plot by one plot by one single developer, it's going to take a pretty long time. So what you can see, that will be the main roundabout of Jalan Arang itself. And coming in, this will be the main entrance. There is nothing much to see at site right now besides roads. But these are actually the locations of the common areas. Just imagine driving through. All this will be the garden space, the common space. And then you have houses on the left and right. But something more important to point out will be the neighbouring lots that is also developing at the same time. The products are pretty common. You have the commercial shop offices which just completed like a year ago. Then you have terrace houses that is coming up very very soon. So on a good side that will create hype to a new location. That's why usually in Sarawak they will mark their location by third mile, fourth mile. But in this new location they call it the Arang Road West. But what I'm also a little bit concerned of will be the neighbouring plot of land that is currently in the green land status so this is what we call brown land where we kind of did some land clearance already those are still in jungle form the roads are designed to be ready for connection but we are just not sure what is that yet and when you are shopping for properties of such then it needs to be a very clear comparison between what is gated and guarded what is not but it will be very easy to just compare what's opposite and what's here right ah yeah they're cheaper buy there low. and this is where concepts plays a different part both are also landed properties both are also double story terrace houses so what sets apart one from another it will be the concept it will be the gated and guarded it will be the the facade design it will be the common areas and i really can't wait to see it though as you can see that will be the main road that will be the main drain so this will be the entrance right but something that is very obvious here will be the existing level of the houses is higher than the road so there will be this small little slope going upwards lah. that's nice then coming out around like one minute from side right immediately you will have these rows of shop houses so these are the new ones you have the existing ones here. That indicates the population that is shifting over to this location. Come to think of it, it looks great when you have all different developers all building at the same time. So that's like a lot of action around. Also one thing to point out for this site is you have a lot of accessibility. Mainly three, so you can come out from Jana Arang of course. You can just drive out here. And there's one more at the other end, but it's not complete yet. But what I'm trying to say is, whenever one main road is stuck, there's always an alternative road to go back home. So that's really important. What you don't want is one main road only in and out. If anything wrong with that road, yeah. And I guess that's about it. For now, let's head on to Sean's Take 3 on 3. So for the three things I really like, number one will be the adoption of new concepts of gated and guarded. Well, it's somewhat similar to the Landestrata Act that we have, but the different land codes, the different regulations here 
kind of have a different mechanism to it but based on concept it's the same thing but it's getting a community together to really be responsible for an area that allows the area to be gated and guarded to have security 24 7 to have common areas that is only exclusive for the residents although this concept is like been there done that for west malaysia but in this area itself, the courage of the developer and they actually see the demand for such products in the market. Then the second thing, the location might be a new location, but a plot of land is actually shared from a master developer. So when you go to site, surrounding Seoul Estate, there will be other developers that is building similar products. If you think about it, would you want multiple developers building at the same time or you want the same developer building slowly one by one? One will take way longer and this approach of doing it all together you will see the address boom up really really quickly of course there will be this issue of competition there will be this issue of price war against each other but that's only beneficial for the consumers because it's now a competition for whose product is more innovative which one has more value which one would you prefer more right it's always good for consumers when you have competition so the last thing is after that decision of going bold in going this gated and guarded route right that allows a lot more design detailings within the unit itself so now you have communal areas where kids get to hang out and play in a secured location as residents i'll be very safe to let my kids just play outside because it will be secured with security guards and cctvs right but my favorite of all would be the unique way of putting the living space behind the house conventionally we have the back lanes that are usually negative spaces but now by adding on green space behind and on top of that, they double up so each house will have their own green space that enhance the experience of that green lane behind houses besides blurring this outdoor indoor space relationship right indirectly it also promotes community living where you can hear your neighbors whenever they are hanging out or they, whenever they are playing as well so kids can then be friends and it just strengthens the neighborhood relationship all together however for the three bad things it's also pretty similar with the good things. When there's a new concept in town like GNG or Lander Strada being introduced into the market, it will be very different compared to the conventional terrace houses. Now, by buying a property of such, I need to pay maintenance fee. There will be rules and regulations I need to follow. There will be things that I cannot do to the facade of the house. So not everybody likes this kind of thing. And we can see that very obviously within Peninsula itself. Although we have a very well regulated lander strata, not everybody likes it. So the initial response from the market might not be that well but there will always be people who likes it and people who don't like it and the second thing i felt that since you guys are trying to really pull off this bold move right why not go all the way like the best thing about lander strata is you get to control everything within the master plan most of the time developers will adopt this spinal circulation method where there will be a main road then branching out to small little roads of houses at the end of those circulation pathways will be cowdy sacks but in this master plan you still see that a lot of weird units at the corners directly facing the road but when i try to understand further apparently the process and regulations for land administration here is a little bit different it's almost impossible to kind of shift all of that altogether. ultimately they inherited the land from the master developer so i think they did everything they could to really change the original intent of the land but just wasted lah really just ah uh, just wasted and last of all, all this new adoption of concept, new implementation of landscape, community living, improvements of infrastructure and etc. Right? All of them comes with a cost. And if you look into the pricing of the surrounding, this project is definitely going to be more expensive from the adjacent competitors just because there will be more resources required to deliver on the product. So now the question is, are people willing to pay the premium of living in the gated and guarded in Kuching in comparison to that conventional normal terrace house? I don't know. But now based on the bookings is around 50% which is very promising and the definition of booking here is people paying 10% upfront which is absolutely different from what we have absolutely insane. And I guess that's all for this episode. Shout out to the team for letting me shoot the project in advance before it's really announced to the world and i guess that's the benefit when your internal team members are developers now <sighs> so privileged if you really like this episode like it share it and even subscribe for more information like this until next time this is sean tan peace